When eVPN was first introduced, it was providing layer 2 service, but today with additional route types, it can provide L3 VPN service as well. Is that true? And if it's the case, why we still have 2547 MPLS VPNs for layer, two, layer 3 service? Let's say eVPN for both layer 2 and layer 3 services. What do you think about that? It's a very good question. And if you look at the eVPN RFC, it defines four route types. So route type 2, which is MAC or MAC plus IP, can provide IP reachability, but as per host, the IP part of Type 2 route is always host route, so either 32 or 128. Much later, Type 5 route, which is IP prefix, has been introduced. And the reason for that was that sometimes you just want to route IP prefixes, not just host route that come from R or ND, right? Type 5 routes give us functionality that's somewhat similar to LCVPN. In a way, you've got a VPN route that's a prefix. So it's great use case for data centers where often you need to advertise not only MAC plus IP, but also SVI or IRB route. It also gives you nice abstraction, hides MAC moves, because now you are within your subnet. As you stretch layer two, your SVI subnet is always the same, right? So from layer to host perspective, it doesn't really matter, as long as you use any CAS gateway. It's less interesting on the service provider side, and all service providers have deployed 2547. Right. On another side, we spent probably 10 years in technology building all the optimization around LTVPN. So from this perspective, I would say that at high scale, LTVPN scales better than EVPN this type 5. And we are talking about service provider use case. On data center side, I don't think you really need LTVPN today. Strictly speaking, LTVPN requires labeled next hub. Obviously, there's workarounds where you jury some other stuff, but it's not native. For a VPN, however, it's built into the protocol that your next hop, which is your VTAP, any other termination point, it's just a remote IP address. It doesn't have to be labeled. So EVPN natively better support data center or IP environments than LTVPN. So, but so uh, which means? To answer your question, if you do it at scale and server provider environment, I would argue that LTVPN are still better approach. But if you are thinking data center, probably you don't need anything else but eVPN. Okay, now what we are saying, eVPN can provide both layer 2 and layer 3 VPN services. And for the data centers, we don't need MPLS, LDP, etc. for that, because anyway, we have the VTAP reachability. For the service provider, you are saying more scalable would be L3VPN, and I would say why. So just from... Uh, how protocols build from implementation perspective. If you are thinking about millions of IP addresses and VPN services, LTVPN as a protocol, as an implementation, at least on Cisco Juniper, scales better than eVPN. Are you talking because for the VPN labels, we can advertise not per IP address, but per VRF, per CE, etc. as well, or any other point? For all practical reasons, you could do similar things for eVPN, you could optimize it. And eventually, I believe the difference will disappear. But looking today, and yeah, I'm not working for router vendor anymore, but talking to some Juniper people, the Cisco people, I'm just passing you information I've gathered. If you want to do LTVPN service scale, so LTVPN is still better technology than eVPN. If scalability is not my concern, I can do whatever I am doing with the 2547 or I, I think updated IFC 4364. I can do yeah. whatever with them eVPN today. Route type 5 is there. I can. Yeah, do. so if you have eVPN deployed and your use case is not massive multi tenancy, like thousands of VRFs, you might seriously consider doing eVPN. Wow. And yeah. again, that to do with how your operational folks are looking at it, whether you are familiar with the VPN enough to troubleshoot it, because it's quite different than... And don't, don't forget, the VPN is inherently switching, it's not routing. So even when you route, there's still some stuff you are doing, like you need router, MAC address, you need things that are needed in background to make the technology work, right? So the operational practices are somewhat different.